Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Hampton and today we're diving into what happens to your body when you eat zero carbs. If you're curious about the science, the benefits and the challenges of this lifestyle, you're at the right place. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more science-backed health insights. Let's challenge conventional wisdom and explore what it truly means to eat for your health. Now, before we begin, I want to emphasize that going zero carb isn't for everyone, and that's okay. If you're thriving on a diet with carbohydrates, there's no need to change what works for you. But for some people, particularly those with certain health conditions, this approach can be transformative. Research shows that mental illnesses like bipolar and schizophrenia, autoimmune diseases, and neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Huntington's disease often improve dramatically on a zero-carb or carnivore diet. What we're about to discuss is backed by science and my experience as a physician. The takeaway, trust your body and its unique needs, not just the guidelines handed down by experts who may not know your specific situation. So what actually happens when you stop eating carbs altogether? Let's break it down. When you eliminate carbohydrates, your body undergoes a metabolic shift called ketosis. Without carbs as a primary fuel source, your liver starts to convert fat into ketones, which become the main energy source for your body and brain. Ketones are incredibly efficient. They cross the blood-brain barrier and provide a clean, burning fuel that reduces oxidative stress in your brain cells. This reduced oxidative stress has been linked to lower risk of cognitive decline and neurodegenerative diseases. Simultaneously, your insulin levels drop significantly. Insulin, as you know, is a hormone that regulates glucose and fat storage. Chronically high insulin levels can lead to insulin resistance, a hallmark of type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. By reducing insulin levels, zero-carb diets help improve insulin sensitivity making your cells more responsive to this crucial hormone. Another fascinating mechanism is the reduction in glycation. Glycation occurs when sugar molecules bind to proteins or fats, creating advanced glycation end products. These AGEs accelerate aging and contribute to chronic diseases like diabetes and atherosclerosis. By eliminating sugar and starch, you significantly reduce glycation, protecting your tissues from unnecessary damage. The benefits of zero carb go beyond just weight loss. Many people report improved mental clarity and focus, often described as brain fog lifting. This happens because ketones provide a steady energy source for your brain, avoiding the spikes and crashes associated with glucose. There's also evidence suggesting that ketones modulate neurotransmitter balance. For instance, gamma aminobutyrate acid, or GABA, an inflammatory neurotransmitter tends to increase in ketogenic states. Higher GABA levels may reduce anxiety and stabilize mood. This could explain why people with psychiatric conditions like bipolar disorder often see improvement in their symptoms on a zero-carb or ketogenic diet. Additionally, zero-carb can also stabilize mood. For individuals with bipolar or schizophrenia, reducing glucose and stabilizing insulin levels may play a role in balancing neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. For those with autoimmune conditions, the removal of plant-based antigens combined with lower inflammation can lead to fewer flare-ups and improve quality of life. Anecdotally and clinically, I've seen patients with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and Hashimoto's thrive on this approach. Of course, no diet is without challenges. The initial transition to zero carb can be tough. As your body adapts to using fat as its primary fuel, you might experience the keto flu, which includes symptoms like fatigue, headache, and muscle cramps. The good news is that these are usually temporary and can be mitigated by staying hydrated, replenishing electrolytes, and increasing your salt intake. Many of my patients use keto chow's salty during this transition and even afterwards. I'll have an affiliate link in the video notes. Another common challenge is addressing your gut microbiome. While zero-carb diets can reduce gut irritation caused by fermentable fibers and sugars, 
Some individuals worry about long-term microbiome diversity. Research suggests that certain beneficial bacteria can still thrive on a diet rich in animal-based foods, but this is an area where more studies are needed. I personally have found that whatever my bi microbiome is doing right now is perfectly suited for me and my irritable bowel has essentially gone away. Socially, zero carb can also be isolating. Explaining to friends and family why you're skipping the bread or dessert can feel like an uphill battle. This is where community support, rather online or in person, becomes invaluable. Support group like Bella's The Steak and Butter Gang or Rena of the 5-Minute Body can be places you can get started. So who should consider going zero carb? If you struggle with chronic fatigue, mood swings, stubborn weight, or inflammatory conditions that don't respond to other interventions, this might be worth exploring. If you have a family history of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, adopting a diet that reduces inflammation and oxidative stress may be a preventive strategy. However, if you're someone who tolerates carbs well and feel great on a balanced diet, there's no need to fix what isn't broken. The beauty of this approach is its simplicity. By eliminating variables like processed food and carbohydrates, you can better understand how your body reacts to whole nutrient-dense foods. As a doctor, I've seen firsthand how powerful dietary changes can be. Zero carb isn't a one-size-fits-all solution, but it's a valuable tool in the health toolbox. For example, I've observed dramatic improvements in metabolic health markers like triglycerides, HDL cholesterol, and C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker to name a few. If you're considering this lifestyle, start with a period of experimentation. Keep track of your symptoms, energy levels, and mood. Pay attention to how your skin looks, how your digestion feels, and how your sleep quality changes. And always remember to listen to your body. Experts can give you guidelines, but they don't live in your shoes. Your experience is what's your most reliable teacher. So as I conclude, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from learning about zero carb living. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and comment below. Are you ready to try zero carb or are you already on this journey? Let's keep the conversation going. Together, we can change the way we approach health. And I can't wait to see you in my next video.